Synthetic biology is a discipline of bioengineering. Um, it was basically a group of uh, engineers kind of came together and decided that genetic engineering could be done better if it was more streamlined and more efficient. So the idea is that they can make useful things with biology as the material. Um, so I found that really interesting as a designer because suddenly you know we'll be making stuff out of um, living material and that's the thing that I've become really curious about. Um, the more kind of common things you read about the press are pharmaceuticals and um, biofuels that kind of stuff but I'm really curious in things that we haven't really thought of yet so new kinds of materials and new ways of making things and even like some of my projects looking at medical products that we haven't really thought of yet like um, uh, like yogurts and that could be engineered for health properties. My whole body of research that I've been looking at is this idea of what's the role of design in the biotech revolution. Designers and architects are taught to think about stuff we can see and these are people who are taught to think about stuff we can't see. So there's, there is a scale issue and a way of thinking that will be really interesting to join. Like the e-chromio, um, which I put James King, the, and the Cambridge iGEM team, we made this suitcase full of coloured poop, which was just one aspect of that project. Um, but in itself, it has become quite iconic and people really want it now. Everyone wants coloured poop as a diagnostic tool. And, and what's been most curious is seeing in scientific presentations, people showing it and they're like, yeah, this is the, you know, the e chromi thing, we're trying to make this happen. The yoghurt drink contains e chromi bacteria, which establish a colony in your gut. They monitor for chemical signals that indicate the presence of a wide range of diseases. If they detect a disease, they start generating the corresponding coloured pigment, producing an easily visible output to prompt you to seek your doctor. Um, the moment I'm um, writing a book, so with my colleagues from Synthetic Aesthetics, we're trying to unpack this idea of what is design in synthetic biology, and can you design nature, and what's the difference between nature and biology. And so about 30 scientists came up with new project ideas and one of the things they came up with was synthetic aesthetics and it got funded. So it's really unusual that scientists kind of came up with a, um, uh, an art and design project. And we set them no agenda, um, there was no uh, deliverables, they just had to explore. And it's a very, very unusual way to run a project. I think the best, um, the most approachable is Cecil Tolas and Christina Agapakis. So they decided to make cheese in the lab and they um, took uh, cultures from, or samples from different people in the lab and made cheese out of that. So there was Daisy's armpit cheese, there was Pablo the philosopher's toe cheese and then various other cheeses. Um, and they went through this really amazing process where they actually made the cheese, they flew it to Berlin um, where they carried on with their residency in Sissel studio and we ended up at a cheese shop in Berlin getting a cheese expert to smell them. Um, but now they're also, they've been examining the smell profiles because there's a famous, um, well, there's amazing kind of overlap between cheese, uh, cheese cultures and the human body. So there's like some cheeses, their signature smell comes from a certain bacteria which is also, for example, found on your foot. Whether we'll be building, I don't know, some other artists and designers who are looking at the field and imagining, you know, how we'll be able to build cities out of using bacteria, whether that comes true or not, um, I don't know. Um, but at the same time, what I found out in my own practice is that by imagining the future, um, you kind of somehow end up sometimes making it happen.